What's up everyone, let's talk about Nano Dimension, NMDM. There was a short seller report titled Problem at Nano Dimension, NMDM by Edwin Dorsey, which was released by The Bear Cave on April 1st. Yes, of all date, April 1st. So when I first heard about it, my initial reaction was, okay, another April Fool's prank, and didn't think much of it. But yesterday, before going to bed, I decided to click on the link to read the article. When I clicked on it, it brought me to a paywall. This is odd. Rather strange as I never had to pay for a short seller's report before. But this got me going. You know, the curious George Monkey wanted to know what the heck the report is all about. My first impression was that, okay, this is a marketing gimmick to get me to click onto the website or some type of a clickbait. So I decided to play along and then find out it wants me to subscribe and pay $440 per year. I said, what? Now, I didn't pay for this. Someone did send me the screenshot so that I can do this video. Now, I initially thought I would only spend 15 minutes reading the article, but it had sent me on a rabbit hole where I spent several hours trying to piece things together. In this video, I will share with you if this short seller report is real or is just an April Fool's joke. Should you be worried about this? Should you panic and sell your NMDM shares first thing on Monday? I will share with you what my thoughts are, so you want to stick around for this. Swedekap, that's hello in Thai. My name is Anthony and welcome to Quantum Finance. I'm a former engineer and data analyst that have turned $50,000 into over half a million dollars in 15 months. If you're new, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back and thank you for your support. Please note that I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything I say in this video is purely for educational and entertainment purpose only. And if you want to get free stocks, be sure to click on the Weibo link below in the description or in my comment section. You'll get two stocks up to $1,900 per share like Google stock. Yes, our viewers have received Google stock. All you have to do is set up an account and deposit $100. Also, come join us in the Quantum Finance Patreon for our weekly watch list with buy and exit price points and other great technical analysis to help you make lots of moolah. To join, please click on the Patreon link in the description below or in my comment section. With that out of the way, let's get right into it. Before I start, I do have to disclose that I own NMDM shares. I have seen many short seller reports before. Their aim is to sell shares while the price is high and then buy them later when the price has dropped significantly. One of the oldest and common tricks of the trade is to manipulate a stock price by creating fear through misinformation. How to do this is to write an article and release it to the public. As you know, wildfire of lies will spread faster than the actual truth. Most of these articles will contain about 70 to 80% facts, but the danger is really in the 20 to 30% alternative facts that are flat out lies, hearsays, or opinions without sufficient facts to back it up. There goes to feed on the fear of the misinformed investors who fail to do their own DD or due diligence. Yes, they want you to panic sell your NNDM shares come on Monday so they can buy it cheap. Bear in mind that these short sellers have nothing to lose. After all, this is their opinion piece. It is part of their constitutional rights, you know, the freedom of speech. So they can say and write whatever they want, whether it's true or not, at your expense. We have seen many great companies such as Tesla and Neo who have been attacked by short sellers before, where they have been accused of being a scam, fraud, and even will go bankrupt. Now, don't get me wrong, there are some short sellers that have exposed fraudulent companies such as Nikola Truck with no working technology as claimed, rolling down some desert hill road, or Lordstown Motor CEO Hank been caught with his made up pre-order numbers. My point is, it doesn't matter on what they say or write is true or not. Usually the evidence is partially true. Short sellers know how to stretch his truth and create misinformation to their advantages. I'm looking at this from a science background because I know how data and information can be manipulated to sway or convince what is not true to be true otherwise. All they're doing as a short seller is like throwing a dart. If they throw enough darts at the board, they will eventually hit the bullseye. That's all they're doing. Now I can read you the whole article and bore you to death and make this video a very very long video like 20 some minutes. I'm not gonna do that to you, okay? So I'm just gonna skip right through my point of view. In a very brief and short summary, the Bear Cave pointed out that Yolf Stern was accused but never was convicted of an extortion attempt while acting as president and CEO of Mago Security System. They went on to say that Nano Dimension's former chairman, Ischat Strem, was arrested on charges of money laundering, aggravated fraud, and security violations. 
The firm says Neo Dimensions history includes consistent unprofitability, serious dilution, and OTC to NASDAQ uplisting, a 50 to 1 reverse split, and 253 press releases. In the last earnings report, Europe Stern did address the unprofitability issue due to COVID-19. The delusion was to raise money for merger and acquisition, which will happen very soon. The reverse split was to comply with the NASDAQ requirement. And the 253 press release, to me, is pure transparency. I'd rather invest in a company that let me know what's going on than to operate in the dark. The bear cave is not really stating anything that we have not already known with the exception of one thing. Having read through the article, Nothing really stood out to me except for Yoff Thurn missing work history from the August 2002 to April 2011 on his LinkedIn profile. So this sent me into a rabbit hole where I thought it would be a 10 to 15 minute Google search end up being several hours where I could not find much information on Yoff Stern's work experience during this period. Now, there are telltale signs of digital footprints such as SEC filings, press releases, and news articles that Yoff Stern did work at Mago Security Systems during the 2008 to 2009 timeframe. This did make me question, why would someone go to such length to create a void or missing information in the LinkedIn profile? At first, I had questioned if there was another Yoff Stern working at Mago Security Systems. So I set out to debunk my hypothesis that there is a different Yof Stern, or as in this case, a misidentity Yof Stern. Well, after several searches, I cross-referenced several data that created a web of companies that Yof Stern had worked at. In particular, he worked at Vulcan Corp, WordStar, and DVTel. Since many of the profile of Yof Stern on the net does not contain macro security systems, there was one document that did. This was the SEC Schedule 13 filings on July 10, 2010 by Mago Security Systems. Within the Exhibit A is where they detail the history of Yoff Stern. Note that it is mentioned that Yoff Stern had worked at Boken and WordStar companies. His education was at ORT Technological College and had a math and computer science degree at Tel Aviv University. These four key data points matches with what Yoff Stern's education and work history listed on his LinkedIn profile. This proved that we can be 100% confident that it is the same Yoff Stern. He is the current CEO of Nano Dimension and the former president and CEO of Mago Security System as mentioned by the bear cave. This did make me feel suspicious of Yoff Stern. Why did he remove the Mago Security System's work history? Is there something else going on that we didn't know? I mean, I could come up with various reasons to defend or accuse Yoff Stern, but that's not my point. Because in the end, it is futile, as only Yoff Stern would know the truth behind this. Basically, to summarize it, Yoff Stern didn't fit in the corporate culture, and his way of doing things was not tolerated, and therefore, he was ousted as president and CEO of Mago Security Systems. The second concern that I had was the former chairman, Ishchak Shrem, but the issue has been dealt with, and I conclude that, that any public company with such blemish will want to cover it up. So. This is very common because all companies have issues and you want to cover it up as a public trade company so that you do not create fear with your investors. This is not an excuse in defense of nano dimension, but it's just the fact that I've worked at Fortune 500 companies and have seen things go down and you don't hear it in the news. Welcome to the corporate world. Third, the timing of the release is rather interesting. Why release it on April 1st and April Fool's Day? Come on, it was meant as a joke? After reading the article, in many ways, it became a joke to me. Fourth, why did the Bear Cave make their short report only available to subscribers? It's like the Bear Cave is super greedy. They want to make money on NMDM by showing the stock. At the same time, they want to make money on NMDM retail investors on monthly and yearly subscription fee. It is not cheap. It's anywhere between $44 a month or $440 a year. In so many ways, they're trying to extort money from us in order to read their report. Which is ironic when you really think about this. Because in their article, they're basically accusing that Yoff Stern was extorting someone when he was working at Macro Security Systems. And now, they themselves, the Bear Cave, is trying to extort us money. Either way, they create a financial win-win environment for themselves. So this has led me to question the integrity of their report. 
Let's face it, most short sellers would want people to read their articles for free, but these guys want you to pay for it. They're playing with people's fear of loss. They're playing with your emotions. They want you to sell your shares so that they can buy it cheap and profit from your mistake. Fifth, the timing of the release of the article relative to NMD stock price is after the fact that it has declined so much, meaning they're preying on retail investors who are trapped. These are retailers who bought high when it was between $12 to $16 and are holding the bag or trapped. Most of the new retail investors who bought high will have the anxiety emotion just seeing how much their investment has dropped in value. They're in what I describe as indecisive stage and are starting to question the stock that they have invested in. In most cases, they're looking for a reason to justify the selling of their NMDM holdings to stop the bleeding. The sole purpose of the Bear Cave's article is to prey on these types of investors. The Bear Cave knows that they can nudge the indecisive investors or weak hands to a panic sell by manipulating the reader's emotions through misinformation. Come on, as an experienced investor myself, we all know that the month of April is a fast recovery month. This is when you pick up good stocks that have been beaten up and heavily discounted. The market will rebound in April. I just did a video on this yesterday. You can watch this video by clicking on the top right link above. There are many big institutions such as Kathy Wood of ARK Invest who are investing in NMDM. I believe the smart money have more resources than I do to perform a thorough DD or due diligence on nano dimension. In other words, there is really nothing being new presented in the Bear Cave article. In conclusion, the article did make me question who is really Yov Stern. Because I could not find any more information on Yov Stern, I cannot conclusively draw a conclusion on what it is or who he is, but to take the article with a grain of salt. The Bear Cave article didn't really have any substantial content or meat to the bone. And therefore, I'm not at all concerned about the article. They did everyone a favor by wanting to charge money for us to read their articles and therefore less medias are actually picking them up and less eyeballs are actually seeing the article. In any case, you didn't really miss out anything from the article. If you like the technical analysis like this, especially with my entry and exit points along with the probability percentage, make sure to join our Quantum Finance Patreon page. Here's what some of our members are saying. Special thanks and shout out to Adam, Suwana, and Steve. Adam Brown stated, quote, Great call. I've been making lots of moolah with this swing, quote. Suwana Mason Singh said, quote, Thanks, I have learned a lot. I wish I would have joined earlier. It would have saved me thousands from making mistakes on investing, unquote. And lastly, Steve Berman stated, quote, Anthony, this is ideal information, especially for a beginner like myself. Best channel on YouTube by far, unquote. So there you have it. If you find the video of value and you have not already done so, please like and share the video. Please also hit the sub button and the alert bell. Thank you and let's go make lots of moolah.